out of the many hats that you wear, one of them is as a coach. Um, how do you coach people to have this more expansive mindset where you're imparting this belief that all things are possible? How do you coach to that? Well, one thing, we have the science. We have the science that's available to us that we can share. We know the science is behind what's really happening. You know, we, we've way ahead of science because science got to figure it out. But we have the neurogenesis. We know that we can, we can birth new neurons in our brain to make us be able to achieve more than we've been able to achieve in the past. We know we have neuroplasticity where we're able to reshape the neural pathways in our brain, physically reshape our brains to be able to uh, to do things that we maybe haven't been able to do in the past. We have mirror neurons, the ability to mirror other people's neurons. That's why I want to be around you, Dr. Tori. That's why I want to be around <laughs> Melissa. That's why I want to be around Rian. I want to mirror your neurons. I want to feel you and I want to experience you. And I also want to think what you're thinking because you're on a higher level than I am. And that's where I'm going. So this is powerful, really powerful experience that I'm having. And I help people have that experience by helping them first, really the hardest thing is bringing them back to base, base zero. Who are you? Mm. Who are you? Most people have been everything to everybody and have failed to realize who they really are. So really getting down to who they are first and then starting to build them up from there because they have capacities that, you know, one of the things I use, uh, one of the uh, stories I use in all my teaching whether they're Christians or not, because everybody knows Cain killed Abel, right? Everybody knows that. So, so yeah, Cain killed Abel. And what did he do after he killed Abel? Well, God banished him out of his presence. So what did he do? Did he go try to get Section 8? No. Did he go to a local shelter? No. Did he go beg on the corner? No. He went out and built a city and named it after his son. Now, here's a man banished out of the presence of God, a murderer, a liar, a deceiver, banished out of the presence of God. He goes out and builds a city. You tell me what we're waiting for. What are we waiting for? Okay, if he can build a city, I can build a nation, okay? He's not gonna build a city on my watch and I don't build a nation, okay? So we have this ability to do so much more, but we have to awaken it. And we gotta awaken it from ground zero, not from the, in the middle, of putting it on top of all of our myths and traditions. I, you know, I help them to destroy the myths and traditions, traditions, encourage them to buy the truth, pay the price for the truth. That means, sell something that you that's not true um, so that you can buy the truth and carry the truth with you because the mm -hmm. truth is what's going to help you get to the next level um, understanding who you are what you have the capacity to do and what you've always had the capacity to do and then like I say and we got the science now that can back us up on some of these things so that's what I use in my culture help people achieve a higher level of success yeah, that's amazing. And that's that's so in alignment, honestly, with, with a big piece of what we do at Flow Research Collective is we, we help people identify what their intrinsic motivators are, right? Mm -hmm. Not the extrinsic, not the money and the status and the recognition, but truly, what is your purpose? What do you care about? What are you curious about? What do you want to develop mm -hmm. mastery in? Um, what's important to you? Yeah, I think that that's such a, such a powerful place to start. Yeah, and what, what are your values? What are your primary values? You, you'll be surprised how long it takes people to get down to what those are because they've lost them. They're buried down in there. And if something happens, they get triggered, and, but they don't, people don't know them, you know, surface thought. They don't know them in their mind. You know, they have to be brought to a process where they go through, a, I, I take them through 300 values, tell them pick 30. And after yeah. they pick 30, I have them pick 10. And after they pick 10, I say, what are the three that you're willing to fight for and possibly even die for? in order to live a life of dignity. That's when we get down to what they really, really want out of life. Yeah, I love really that. I think that. I think that's amazing. And that's, you know, we do, we do a similar exercise in High Flow Leadership, now climbing Mount Bold, um, where I challenge people to, a value is not just a word, right? Define it, make it an actionable sentence. It's gonna guide your decision-making and how you look at different problems, how you tackle new situations, right? It's not, not just a word that's hanging out that might sound nice or, or look nice on a piece of paper. Make it meaningful. What does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, and that's what helped me to actually uh, separate from my fiance. Um, I, we, were, we were engaged for three years and I was in a class, I was in a training um, back in, uh, sometime back with Darren Hardy. And he said, if you don't like what's happened to you, happening to you, stop tolerating it. Mm. And so <laughs> I said, I don't like what's happening to me with this relationship. <laughs> so 
So I knew, I said, now you met him. He was a multimillionaire. He was, uh, had his own business, he gave me a $20,000 ring and just did all kinds of, gave me all kinds of money, do all kinds of things for me. But he was not giving me what I needed most. I needed somebody near me when I had my hardest times and I needed somebody with me when I was going through my, my greatest times, my most successful times. He couldn't be there for my hurt. He couldn't be there for my success. So that let me know if I was to marry him, I would have to tolerate the fact that he wasn't going to be there in my hurt, my pain. He wasn't going to be there in my height. And I just refused to live like that. So one of my values is peace. And he was disrupting my peace. So he had to go. <laughs> so I said, well, I may not meet anybody else for the rest of my life, but I'd rather live alone for the rest of my life rather than have my peace constantly being disrupted because that was one of my primary values, my peace, my freedom to think, to move about, to learn, to, to, to explore, and my spirituality. Those are the three things that I have to have. And if anybody's going to um, struggle with me about those, they need to be out of my life as soon as possible because <laughs> those are, are non-negotiables. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think, you know, we talk about it in, in one of our courses in Climbing Mount Bold, that having clarity on your personal values, your leadership values, and ensuring that you're living life in alignment with those in all regards, because you can't be a different person personally than you are professionally, right? Your people will know, they'll see through that those are not actually your values. So I think that, you know, being true to those, living your life in complete alignment, I mean, what a, what a great model for your team. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's so important. And I'm so glad it's part of the coursework as well. It helps us to really zero down on, on things that are important, that it can help us move forward on this journey if we had clarity about them. And that's one of the things about the clear goals to me. That mm -hmm. was really, really getting down to those clear goals, knowing exactly what you're trying to do, what you plan to do and how you're going to do it. That was really powerful to me. I had never been, I had never even heard of hard goal, high hard goals. Mm -hmm. So getting to that high hard goal, you know, after my massively transformative purpose in my high hard goal, I listed three things that I wanted to happen within a year. And I, I two of them I made so far. It looks like I made two of them so far. I got another one. I'm like halfway there, but I'm looking forward to, I, if I had not even had them as goals, I would never have even got my mind in that place. I mean, I raised my income. I doubled my income. I had planned to triple it, okay? Wow. But I doubled it, in it from this class, using this class, using my my um, my high hard goals. Um, I was in massively transformative services and high, uh, uh, massively massively transformative purpose, and then the high hard goals underneath, and then the clear goals. I was able to double my my income in that year, and so now my husband think I'm supposed to double it every year, but. <laughs> <laughs> Like you did it once, just bring it. You can do it again. Like, please, okay, just give me time. <laughs> uh, but another thing is to be able to move out of the area that I'm in into another part mm. of the country, which I had never even dreamed of. But I wrote it down as one of the things because I knew the kind of life I want to live. And it's not in a cold area like Chicago, right? So, so yeah, this is good. It's been very good. It's a very, it's a good, if somebody wants to take a journey to mm -hmm. a higher level of themselves, to open their minds to, the multitude of possibilities that's ahead of them. This course is the course for them. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.